Haiti has been hit with a massive 7.2 earthquake today. A very strong, of course, aftershakes. Tremendous destruction, massive destruction and tsunami warning has been given by USGS. It's a developing story. Haiti hit by a major 7.2 earthquake today, causing homes and other buildings to collapse across the Caribbean country and tsunami threat to be issued with waves between 3 to 10 feet above tidal level possible. And according to USGS, there is a 35% chance that fatalities range between 1,000 to 10,000, as well as a 35% chance of economic losses in the tens of millions, according to the Mirror. A lot of houses have been destroyed, a lot of people injured and were taken to the hospital. This is what Valence George posted on Facebook, adding a photo of the destroyed two-story home across the Miami Herald. A lot of aftershocks are, are still taking place. The earthquake, which was stronger than the 2010 7 magnitude quake, which struck and killed uh, 300,000 people, struck northeast of St. Louis du Sud. The 5.2 aftershock felt around 20 miles after the first, some 12 miles from Cavillon. The Prime Minister's office said the emergency response had been activated and were assessing the damages, which primarily reports suggest that the Grand Ants and southern regions of the country near the peninsula. Images shared social media showed collapsed homes and the Catholic Cathedral in the city in the town of Les Angeles, which is a part of the Jeremy in the Grand Ants region, turned to rubble. Destruction was also reported in the coastal city of Leque after the ground shook at 8.29 a.m. And this is still a developing story. Let's take a look at the um, frequency maps and what is going on there right now with the aftershocks. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. This is the um, location south of Haiti, uh, southwest actually, 7.2 magnitude earthquake. Let's pull out and this is the, of course, okay, this is a uh, all the aftershock well not these are the ones uh, above 2.5 this is the latest one within the hour and um, one person reported feeling it of course most people ha should be out uh, instead of uh, uh, I just got a, a flash that uh, at least 29 people have lost their lives from this quake you can see all these aftershocks um, which are about 2.5 now we're going to see the shake map I'm sure that uh, even Florida shook. But these are, of course, a very unstable area. These are all volcanic islands. And let's remember that a few days ago we had the 8.2 in Alaska. Even this one, even this one is uh, large today, 7.9. And then we had the, um, the quake in the Philippines. This one here, 7.1. And then yesterday we had the other one here in the South Atlantic, 8.1, and this one here, 7.2, okay? A lot of very devastating large earthquakes. Of course, this one here, thank goodness, was uh, away from uh, populated areas, but that was 8.2, obviously is not good, 8.1, 8.2. The 8.2 in uh, Alaska a few days ago. Um, you know, these quakes are big, big enough to ring, uh, make the earth ring like a bell. Uh, obviously, the uh, tectonics uh, and the fault lines shake because of these tremendous amount of huge earthquakes. And what's this one? This is another one in the North Atlantic, in the yeah, Atlantic Ocean, the uh, Mid-Atlantic Trench. But uh, let's go to the shake map. Okay, that's the aftershock. But even the aftershocks are bad because anything standing... Uh, the big quake would have uh, cracked even the, the uh, buildings that are still standing, so the aftershock would bring them down. So this is the, the frequency map. This is, this is Haiti. Now, if you extend the frequency map, obviously Florida, 
and the Keys, Florida would have uh, felt it, which is not good because Florida is a very low-lying area. Basically, um, sediment from what you all just say, sedimented from uh, uh, glacier, a glacier. Okay, so that, of course, is very low-lying um, and uh, not good for the for the area. Okay, um, so this is the situation. If we pull in, we'll see there's, there's a lot of liquefaction going on there. Let's pull in a little bit. There it is, that blue area. Okay, this blue area here, purple, blue, and red, is liquefaction. Let's go back to this, liquefaction, okay? liquefaction you can see any buildings built there uh, obviously would have not had a very solid ground and uh, let's go back to the aerial okay Haiti it's a volcanic island and we've had a lot of um, earthquake activity there slowly 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 daily weekly um, not good, obviously. Let's go to this. Pull in again. Okay, into the Caribbean. And uh, Haiti, Puerto Rico has the earthquakes as well. There we are, Puerto Rico. And all these are, of course, all these are volcanic islands here. The Antilles are, uh, of course, volcanic islands. And let's go to our... Um, Sorry, no, I want to pull in again. Pull in so we can read a little bit more about this. A little bit more. Um, let's go to the tsunami. Tsunamis. Tsunami situation. No tsunami warning. Okay, okay. So there was no tsunami threat. Thank goodness. Okay, let's go back. And see our area right here dominican republic port of prince haiti basically is one island divided into two countries okay what did i do i took you out sorry okay extensive diversity and complexity of tectonic regimes in the perimeter of caribbean involving no fewer than four major plates, the North American, South American, the Nazca, and the Cocos, inclined zones of deep earthquakes, ocean trenches, arcs of volcanoes, clearly indicate subduction of oceanic lithosphere along the Central American Atlantic Ocean margins of the Caribbean plate. And uh, while crustal seismicity, Guatemala, North Venezuela, Cayman Ridge, and Cayman Trench indicate transform fault and pull apart Basic, basic basin tectonics. Now, north along the northern margin of the Caribbean plate, the North American plate moves westward with respect to Caribbean at a velocity of about 20 millimeters a year. Motion is accommodated along several major transform faults. Now, you can see, you can read this. It's a very detailed, of course. The plate boundaries references. Now, the, a bit, uh, the boundary between Cocos and Nazca plates characterized by series of north-south trending transform faults, east-west trending spreading centers. The largest and most seismically active of these transform boundaries, Panama Fracture Zone, terminates in the South Galapagos Rift, uh, where it forms part of the cocos nazca caribbean Triple Junction. Earthquakes along the Panama Fracture Zone are generally shallow, low to intermediate, magnitude 7.2, are characteristically right lateral strike slip faulting earthquakes. Since 1900, the largest earthquake to occur along the Panama Fracture Zone was July 26, 1962, 7.2 earthquake. So this is up there with that. Okay, it's a strike slip fault. Um, so we have to be very careful, even uh, people in uh, Florida, Puerto Rico, obviously, and we know Florida is very, very low-lying, very sandy. Uh, so, you know, this is obviously a lot of water underneath. Obviously, this is not good. We've had a lot of very big earthquakes in the past few
few days. Something is going on here. Uh, so this is a developing story. No tsunami threat. Okay, that's good. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.